Hi everyone and welcome to Science Storytime. Thank you so much for being with me here today. My name's Ford and the story we're going to be reading is Ricky the Rock That Couldn't Roll, written by Jay McClinsky and illustrated by Aaron Wozniak. Over the lake and out past the bay was a green grassy hill where the rocks came to play. They would race to the top to take in the view, then roll their way down the way rocks love to do. There were Kip, Pip, and Chester, and Marvin the Boulder. Ignatius played too, though he was much older. And a group called the Pebbles never ever sat still, zigzagging their way up and over the hill. Kai was a meteorite, and not from this planet. And Maya was lava, but taken for granite. Stu was the smart one. Parker the clown and grumpy old Ebert rolled around with a frown. Gabby was sassy, Lessie had flair, and Emma was giggly, and Hud had black hair. But the one trait that seemed to be shared by them all was that every rock there was shaped like a ball. And because they were round, they could easily roll through the grass past the lake and up over the knoll. Except for poor Ricky, who quietly sat. You see, Rick couldn't roll because one side was flat. His friends didn't get it. Come roll, they would chant. So Ricky tried, but replied, I'm sorry, I can't. But the rocks were determined. They were sure they could solve Rick's flat-sided problem and help him revolve. So Marvin the Boulder, with his impressive physique, carried Rick all the way to the hill's grassy peak. Then he pushed him downhill, yelling, Keep rolling, kid! But Ricky didn't roll. He just kind of slid. Well, the rocks weren't done, not by a mile. Surely the next try would get Rick to smile. They stuck rubber balls all over Rick, using big globs of glue to get them to stick. Then they were proud of themselves. This will work, they announced. But Ricky still couldn't roll. Now he just sort of bounced. Well, they pushed and they pulled, trying every which way to get Rick to roll, but by the end of the day, Nothing had worked, just like Rick expected, and he ended up feeling depressed and dejected. It's no use, Ricky sighed. There's just not a way, so I'll sit off to the side and watch you all play. But his friends wouldn't quit. We're here for you, brother, and we'll get you to roll one way or another. So they pondered and thought, each straining their brain, till they looked up and saw it was starting to rain. And that's when it hit that smart stone named Stu. Eureka, he shouted, I know just what to do. He explained to them how they could get Rick to tumble. My plan is pure genius. Stu wasn't too humble. So they carried our hero down the road about a mile to the lake where they gathered up mud they could pile on the flat side of Rick, creating a mound. Then they shaped smooth and sculpted it until it was round. Then after the rain, with the sun in the sky, they left him to bake till the mud was all dry. They gathered up vines and a colorful feather, and they wrapped it around Rick to keep him together. When the last knot was tied and the work was all done, the only step left was for Rick to have fun. They stood back and watched, feeling nervous and tense as Rick breathed in deep with increasing suspense. He moved slowly at first, testing out his new mold, and then, for the first time, Ricky the Rock rolled! 
So Bria the ladybug, who'd been there from the start, felt a surge of pure joy swell up in her heart. She thought, as she watched her friends play on the hill, that there's always a way if there's also a will. And she said to herself, as Ricky rolled down the slope, when you're surrounded by love, you always have hope. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story, Ricky the Rock That Couldn't Roll. It's fun to pretend that things like rocks are alive, especially like in this book. But if you go outside and look for rocks now, right, you know that those rocks aren't going to have eyeballs and be doing crazy things like this. Let's look at some real rocks. We find rocks all over the earth. And there are three ways that nature can make these rocks that we find. One of the ways is by stacking layers of little pieces on top of each other and squishing them over time to get a kind of rock we call a sedimentary rock. This is a sandstone sedimentary rock. And you see, there are layers, layers stacked up like this. Sedimentary rock. Another way nature makes rocks is by squishing those layers together over time and heating them up to create something called a metamorphic rock. Lots of heat and pressure can turn other types of rocks into a metamorphic rock. So here is a metamorphic rock. This is a metamorphic rock called serpentine. It's the California state rock. Serpentine. Heat and pressure made this rock. Finally, the third way nature makes rocks is when lava, that melting rock that erupts out of volcanoes, gets cold and hard. So here we have what we call an igneous rock, a rock that formed from lava getting cold and hard. This is called pumice. And because the lava that formed this rock was releasing heat and gas, lots of little holes were made in this rock that are full of air now. So pumice is a very light rock. So the three types of rocks we find on Earth, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. So how about today you behave like a geologist? Geologists are the scientists that study rocks. Go out into your backyard. See if you can find rocks of different types. Maybe you'll find igneous rocks. Maybe you'll find metamorphic rocks. Maybe you'll find sedimentary rocks. Go out and explore. Once again, thank you for joining me for Storytime, and we look forward to reading a story with you again soon.